So in addition to um, a lot of imaging uh, research, I, I, my, uh, the area that I describe, the broader area that I describe my research as is being in computational instrumentation. So devices, uh, sensors, uh, data, getting information out of the data. Uh, that's applicable in the, the um, medical community, but it's also applicable in the manufacturing community. So I do a lot of process control, uh, a lot of instrumentation, optical instrumentation, ultrasound instrumentation for looking, looking and analyzing, looking at and analyzing flexible electronics as they're being manufactured or flexible surfaces as they're being manufactured. So how do you create flexible electronics or how do you create uh, flexible surfaces where you're trying to create patterns and features at a micron scale or a submicron scale, but over centimeters to, to meters of area. Doing that where you need to deposit one layer and the next layer and the next layer when you're trying to align these nanometer or submicron features over centimeters to meters of area is a very challenging uh, proposition. So that's an area that we're, we're doing a lot of work on. I'd say what's interesting about a lot of the manufacturing work that's happening on campus is that um, we're excited by the opportunities that are, that are coming about by the, the recommendations that came out of the Advanced Manufacturing Partnership or Advanced Manufacturing Partnership 2. Um, that the United States is looking at creating a network of, of innovation manufacturing institutes that um, are to serve as a, a matching mechanism between academic research and industry needs. So I'd say a lot of the, the manufacturing process or the manufacturing equipment research that happens on campus, both mine and more broadly in the laboratory for manufacturing and productivity, um, a lot of our research is funded by industry. Um, and so I think these manufacturing institutes are sort of a, an amplification of that mindset where more broadly you will have an entity who serves as a, a resource for small and medium enterprises that, that where they can do small batch production. It serves as a resource to mate the maybe fundamental research that's happening or the, the applied research that's happening in the academic environments at MIT or any university with the market and business needs of the manufacturing industries. So within the collaboration between MIT and MGH and as part of the, the Medical Electronics Device Realization Center, uh, a lot of our research is, is funded by big companies. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we're uh, not starting companies as well. So there are some, some recent examples of, of graduate students that have taken the research that's been done within the context of the MedRC and they've, they've created a company. Um, there's a, a recent example of basically a behind-the-ear sensor that's monitoring uh, heart rate, ballistic cardiogram, and other, uh, other, of, of fi other physiological sensors. Um, the form factor behind the ear sort of fits the hearing aid model. It's a nice bony protrusion and it's a sort of a nice way to, to enhance and get uh, more and, and uh, more frequent longitudinal data of, of the physiological signals that you would want to get in, in a form factor that's, that's non-obtrusive. Right? So it's, it's a company that's now sort of just actually just down the street. Um, but then as well, uh, more often than not, the, the outcome of the research um, can often go into the products and the product lines that the, the, the GEs and the Philips and the analog devices are, were originally imagining when they were sponsoring the, the research. See, another, another very actually curious avenue um, that has not yet um, happened but has been brought up by um, a number of our partner companies is many of them have venture arms and that they may not be uh, interested in taking the technology at MIT and bringing it into the, their main core business, but that they would like to maintain visibility into, into what we're doing. And they would be willing to invest via their venture arm in an entity, in a new entity, in a small startup company, and have a seat at the board and just have visibility, recognizing that by the time the company grows, they will have to pay a lot more money to acquire it, but at that point they've de-risked it. They've had somebody else's money, their own money, but sort of different version, a different arm of the company, help them grow the company, um, had a seat at the table to potentially help them guide it, have visibility into it, and then from the sort of the, the large sort of product line perspective, have de-risked it sufficiently that they can come in and acquire it and make it a proper business line.